Hey everybody, welcome to Pop Culture Philosophers. It's time for a movie review. Today we're talking about Joker. That's right, everybody. Thanks for checking out the video. I am Rockin' Robbie Billups. This is... Tulane Bullard. And this is... Brooks. And we are going to be talking about Joker today. That's right, the brand new movie directed by Todd Hangover Phillips, starring Joaquin Phoenix. Um, first of all, we're just going to get right into what we think about the movie, then we're going to get into some spoilery territory, but in a non-spoiler way, um, I liked the film. I know a lot of people were kind of worried about it. Um, I actually liked the film a lot. I thought that it was very well done. Joaquin Phoenix is brilliant in this film. He is absolutely deserving of being at least nominated for an Academy Award for this. Um, this movie was disturbing. It was raw. It was visceral. Um, it was it was unlike a lot of it's. It was unlike some. Uh, it gave me an experience that not a lot of film does. I, I felt very disturbed. They and don't make movies afterwards. like this really often anymore. They sure they, don't. I think that's probably why it was so controversial. Which I didn't know about the controversy until like. I got out of the theater and Jelani brought it up. Yeah. But, but apparently there's a, this was a big deal, a big controversy over it. And it's, you know, it's just a movie. It's just a mo the kind of movie that, you know, Hollywood hasn't been making much of lately. Yeah. Right. And it's definitely, it, I don't think it glorifies the violence that's in it. I think it just kind of, it's more of a warning. It's, it's, I think it's got some good themes that it mm -hmm. approaches. Overall, do you like the movie? Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah? Joaquin Phoenix? I, yeah. He, he, I mean, he, I think he was great. And, you know, he really... Uh, he bring he brings the character to life, you know, and makes you makes you understand him, you know. Okay. You feel for him. Okay. And you know, the, in this movie, a lot of his the Joker's kills like he doesn't kill anybody that hasn't it, he, at least he has he hasn't perceived has wronged him. Yeah. Like, okay. You know, the subway guys. Well, we're not going to get into too that. much spoilery Spoiler, territory right but, now, but Brooks overall likes it. Yeah. Jelani, what do you think about the movie overall? I love this film. This is. One of the best comic book films that they've ever like brought to light made me feel like this was I don't know even close I, I, uh, to Heath Ledger. Mm -hmm. He has uh, Joaquin Phoenix has this this feeling that he he rivals Heath Ledger in the intensity that he puts into this role. He lost a lot of weight for this. He 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 put in a lot of pain for this. They said they had outtakes of him, like just screaming at the camera mm -hmm. because he, you know, he was into the character, and you can tell in his face in those in the teasers that we saw. Yeah, and that's what brought me to this movie. Um, it is worth watching. Everyone should, that is a Joker fan, should watch this film because I feel that it tells a different tale of Joker. We're always going to get a different origin story. We're always going to have something different of the Joker, but this I think is a good piece of him, and there's yeah. probably a Joker in all of us in some point. Yeah, absolutely, all right. So overall, we like it. We'll get to our ratings at the end of the video, but right now we're getting into spoiler territory. So spoiler alert: we're talking about Joker. I freaking love this movie. I like all the little fun little tidbits, the stuff with Thomas Wayne, Bruce Wayne's in the movie. It gets mm -hmm. creepy. It's a really crazy psychological like study. Yeah. of mental illness, right? It really is. It and, tells a tale. Of and what yeah. is the cost of a society of a society ignoring or not really caring? You know, it's it's mm -hmm. chilling. And some of the things in the journal are very ch chilling like the thing about mental illness is people expect mm -hmm. you to act like you don't have it. Right. You know or something like that and like it's, it's just All it's the, very disturbing. And they said that Joaquin Phoenix wrote most of those those Yeah, he made that journal. Made that journal. And it 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 had cut up pictures of bodies and all this other weird junk in it, and it it felt like he was tortured. And he's telling this to someone who's not even really listening to him. Mm -hmm. It felt like it was just a city thing job that she had. She had papers sitting everywhere. Yeah. And by the way, this is the darkest I've ever seen Gotham City. Darkest Gotham City <laughs> is gritty. It has its moments, but I've never seen it in. Gotham, like in nineteen eighty. Well, there's like a whole garbage problem. Yeah, like the, apparently the, the garbage rats. hasn't been running for a long time, so like everybody's got garbage piled up outside. It, there. it definitely oh, yeah. picks up this vibe, you know, because set in the seventies, mm -hmm. right? And it's it definitely it picks, yeah, it definitely picks up. I'm pretty sure it's the seventies, right? Okay. Maybe it's 81 or something around it's somewhere there. But in it there. definitely feels like seventies. But movies. it's 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 a darker film. It's dark. Yeah, it's it's uncomfortable when he does his stand up routine. Mm -hmm. I know he's gonna bomb. But he is so 
cringeworthy. It's like you're in that audience and you're like, he's bombing out. Yeah. Like, and no one's laughing. Now, it is an origin story, you know? And it so is. a lot of people have the idea that you really shouldn't give the definitive origin for the Joker. Yeah. And I would say that this is just an Elseworlds. There's been comic books where they give the right. Joker. In fact, one of the most one of the most popular and probably the best Joker story ever is The Killing Joke. And yeah. this actually pulls some stuff from that. But I think it takes a little bit more of a, a more sinister, darker, just... deeply rooted look <sighs> at this stuff. And and I I... I wouldn't say that this movie... It, this movie does make you feel bad for Arthur, who is it the does. character that becomes Joker. It really does. Um, it does, but it doesn't like justify what he does, I don't think. like mm -hmm. You do get the sense that those people might deserve it a little bit, mm -hmm. right? And that's one of the things. It's kind of like V for Vendetta, mm -hmm. where it's asking you to be like, well, this is a problem, right? Do you agree that the, the disparity between... The elite rich in Gotham and the, 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 the poor and the downtrodden. Yeah, that's right. How do you fix it? Is this the right answer? And they, well, yeah, but V for Vendetta asks you that same question. Yeah. Like, what's the alternative? What are you supposed to do? And there's also a lot that's kind of ambiguous in this film because what's her name? She was in Dead Zazie Beats. Zazie Beats. She's in this film as, yeah. as kind of the love interest, but then you find, and the whole time, I'm the like, whole time she I'm like, this is weird that, that this is happening. She just likes him out of the blue. And then you find out it's all in his head. And it's all been made up. And it's kind of very, it's... people were afraid that this movie was going to be Taxi Driver meets um, King of New York. Not King of King New York, comedy, but King comedy. of Comedy. Yeah, but the heroes in it. Yeah, <laughs> and, and yeah, I love yeah. that this movie. But it's, it's more to me like Fight Club meets Falling Down. Mm-hmm. But falling down, but not just about a dude having a bad day because his wife left him and right. cheated on him, and he they won't serve him breakfast at like you know ten forty five or whatever that movie was. Remember that? The yeah, man. Incident. Um, it's a lot more deeper than just having a bad day. Like he does have a he series has a of bad days. Like, well, you said how it's like the killing joke, but the killing joke was like, what happens when you have one bad day? But with this one, it's like, what happens if you have had a lifetime of bad days? Yes. So there's yeah. like, he even says at one point, he's like, when he's talking to his mom, he's like, I've never been happy a day yeah, one in my minute, life. Yeah, one minute of my life. Yeah. And, and everybody the entire time is telling him, put on a smile, put on a happy face, pretend, just fake it till you make right? it, right? And that's something we tell people. And like, that works for a lot of people. Like, it works for me personally. Mm. Like, if I'm having a bad day, I can just kind of fake it until I make mm. it. And eventually, like, be cool, right? You know, yeah. there's plenty of times where I've shot a video where inside I was all like, er, but, you know, you got to bring the energy. You got to bring the, the life to it, right? All right. That doesn't work for everybody. Yeah. You know, right. and it can even be insulting when someone like me is telling someone that's not like me to be like, oh, just... Just yeah, suck it up. Suck it up. Yeah. Power, you know, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like Michael Booth. We're all just going to keep our heads yeah. down and fly right on through. <laughs> we'll be fine, you know? But it's the danger of, of that kind of... It doesn't work for everybody. And, and, and mental health is not something to be ignored. Mental illness is not something to be cast aside. Not something to Dude, not be taken God. seriously, you know? Yeah. What do you think? How, how do you think about the way it approaches that theme? Do you think it uses... Because I don't think it uses it as an excuse to justify Joker's behavior. It's showing. There's a reason. Yeah, I think you can show the cause of something right. without it making it an excuse for yeah. something, right? What do you think? Well, yeah. I mean, I think uh, like it, it kind of helps you understand because you know it's not just that he has mental problems. It's also that his environment is so bad, and mm -hmm. like everybody, like nobody cares about him. Nobody yeah. listens to him. He feels alone. Like he has to basically make up a girlfriend for himself in his head. Yeah, and like he's like. Everyone's mocking him, mm -hmm. and he's, he's like, you know, he says, uh, nobody sees me. Yeah. But then, like, when he starts, you know, becoming the Joker, he's like, people are starting to, to yeah. see. So he's like, he feels like, you know, the only way he can get the attention he needs is to, you know, murder. You know? Yeah. yeah. To, to make, a, make a noise. Loud, make and, a and the initial murder is, is an act of self-defense. Yep. You know? Yeah, and then well, except he, when he's, he's when walking he chases that dude down. He chases that dude down and shoots him like a dog. He Michael Myers. That was him. awesome. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. And here we are like, yay! Yay! It was terrible. Yeah. Um, but anyway, um, I, I think, yeah, I, I'm right there with you. And it's funny that we mentioned the Michael Bluth stuff because there is a sense of, re of arrested development with Arthur, too. Mm -hmm. He's never, he doesn't know. Like, I watched this interview with Joaquin Phoenix and he was saying, like, that scene in the subway. He's like, you know, this woman's being harassed by these three drunk Wall Street, you know, mm -hmm. yuppies, Yuppie right? Guys, yeah. And and he doesn't help her, but not because he's like scared or anything. But he was saying is like to 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 Arthur, he's he's kind of like, is this how you're supposed to? He doesn't know how to talk he to her. He doesn't know, to do he doesn't know yeah. how to interact. He doesn't know how to make that kind of a connection. 
you know, and so he's got that look at his journal, you know, and like he's got some he's got some really weird repressed things he just doesn't know. So there's a sense of rest of development, there's his true mental illness, um, and then there's just the world just always ignoring him, you know, and I think that's where Phillips and company are 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 shining the light in on it, being like, you know, people have problems and we all just expect them to, to get over it. Right. Or to act like everything's fine, and that doesn't work for everybody. And if it doesn't work, it can it can get into a dangerous situation, and that's what this movie's kind of about. Mm-hmm. But also, people say something like like the Joker shouldn't be celebrated, right? Yeah. Well, it's just going to happen it's, because the Joker is one of the most popular comic book villains. He's the he's probably the most yeah. popular. Everybody loves of the DC Joker, at right? least. So maybe it yeah. was a little. It was definitely a bold move, I think, to take this much of a visceral mm-hmm. and raw and disturbing take on it. Mm-hmm. But I like it because to me it's more true to the character. Mm. You know, it like, is. This is how he becomes the Joker. This is why he exists uh, to ruin and the things. And I, I think that he needed to go through those things, and he was being forced out of these things mm-hmm. over time. Like you said, they did forget about him. They turned their backs on him. And his, his he was ado- he was abandoned at birth. He he got adopted by a crazy woman. <laughs> Who basically like raised him and told him at one time that he was the adopted child of Bruce Wayne? You get Thomas Wayne. a Thomas Wayne. Excuse me. I was like, well, she didn't tell him that he but found out. He found out on the show. She's under delusion. Letter. She was nuts as well, but she brought his her own psychosis on him. On top of him being beaten by her yeah. boyfriend, he lived in a life of neglect and, and abuse. Awful, awful existence. And all it of continues his life. on, and it's painting like nobody. I love the moment when the doctor or with the therapist that he's talking to, after they shut down the program, so he's not out. He's not he's, on his he drugs. He has no anymore. drugs. He's not he getting has no help idea. anymore. What, even if the help wasn't effective, he, he was talking to someone. He, he had some form of release, some form of something like that, right? Um, I love the moment she's like, Arthur. They don't give an f about you. They don't. And they don't give an f about me. Mm-hmm. And to me, that movie is kind of about that. That. Not like a, it, it is a class war that erupts. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a riot it's based on this class war. Yeah. And the, my one big problem with the film is that it does at the end paint Joker as kind of like this like V like for Vendetta, hero. like a hero, yeah. like a anti hero. Now, obviously, it's done with the music and everything. It's it's yeah. it's, it's obviously awesome. that it's not that final act. You know, at the same time, like earlier when he yeah. was on the talk show, like the guy's like, "You trying to make a political statement?" He's like, "No, I don't really." I don't have any political. He just right. he just wants he that attention. Care. Yeah, he's, he's it's like, not even attention. He's just like, about that for him. It's, it's like what everybody else is doing. Like that's just you know, it's caused by him, but that's not what he wanted. He wasn't trying right. to do that. You know. Yeah. It's just like that's just how things happen. That's how the Joker is. You know, things random. He just kind of randomly of sets things off. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. Arthur is just. It's such a well. It's like such an intense vision of this character. Joaquin Phoenix is just, he really, this he isn't just like home. someone acting like something. Yeah. This is like, this was, this felt life. so real, man. It, it felt just, like he actually went through that. Well, this coming from a guy that like faked that he wasn't going to be an actor for Yeah, a long became time. a rapper. Yeah, became a rapper. Yeah. I mean, it, of course, because he, he's very method. Mm-hmm. I mean, and it's, it works very well for his character. I hope. He is nominated for an Oscar for this, at least nominated. I mean, he doesn't have to win this one, but they may take it this year. Yeah. I haven't watched any real films, but I really think that this this might be the one. I think just maybe some of the negative media surrounding it, it might hurt. I don't know. It's you not going to hurt it. I don't think so because I think he should definitely be nominated because yeah. I think it's a brilliant performance. Yeah, I think it's as I think it's the strongest performance as the Joker. Like, and it's not the comic book Joker, y'all. It's, it's not, not. It's not a comic it's book not. movie. This is a different film. This is a completely different film from yeah. all of that. Yeah, and there I'm cool with it. Yeah, and I love it. This is something akin to, like, an Elseworlds mm-hmm. or something. You know, like, when when Grant Morrison and Dave McKean did um, Arkham Asylum, you know, that doesn't fit in with your typical mm-hmm. comic booky Batman right. fun stuff from the 80s and the 90s or whatever, but... I like that. I like this. Is this feels it's something so like that? Real. This feels like a it prestige feels... format graphic novel mm-hmm. or something. Yeah. I don't know. I, but I really liked it. But that's like what DC take. wants to do now. Yeah, they want to make films that are like graphic novels. You can pick it up, put it down, and that's that story. Yeah, and then tell another one instead of making a cinematic universe. It yeah. makes total sense, and it works. And I really want them to continue this because you get you'll get an Oscar quality. 
caliber movie yeah. out of Joker, which I really thought was not going to do well until mm-hmm. I saw the first teaser. And I was like, the second I saw the, t- the makeup test and how he looked and oh, what was, you sold me right then. Because I was like, oh yeah, they're they're making a character piece mm-hmm. of a villain. I mean, because you just can't have him, oh, I'm shooting up back, so I'm doing all this stuff. You could how easily could have done that. Yeah. They've done that. And they did that horribly this last time with Suicide Squad. And Suicide you didn't like Squad. Jared Leto, Jared? He's not the best. He's not the best. He he says he thinks he was doing better, but I, and I like Jared Leto. Don't get me wrong. It's just that's not that was not him. I have he a hard time like saying whether he was bad or good because I don't think he got enough screen time. He didn't time, get enough time to do but it. I was you know I was saying it's not top the top of my list either. I'm just. I still have never seen Suicide Squad. I feel like I feel like the blessed, the I blessed should, one here. You should watch it because it is. Good. It is kind of entertaining it's, and it's. Uh, Harley it's Quinn awful. has her moments and and it did shots. Okay. I'll get I'll get plenty of Harley Quinn and Birds of Prey. Trust me. Good luck with that. Harley Quinn's gonna be in Birds of Prey. Yeah, it's man. basically it's Harley basically Quinn. Harley Quinn movie. But back to Joker. <laughs> Was he a member of that team? No. 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 <laughs> like, isn't that like that girl in hundreds? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. yeah. yes. Yeah. It's gonna be con- what? Like birds, back, back to, yes. birds of prey. Back yeah. to Joker. Bad. Um, I love the cinematography in this movie. Yeah. It is shot brilliantly. It's a Scorsese the film. The camera work it definitely homages Scorsese. Like Scorsese is involved at some point as an executive or something like that. He's a producer. Um, it feels very much like. Scorsese esque, but it doesn't feel like a rip off of a Scorsese film. Like yeah. I said, it doesn't. It's not a rip off. It did. It just feels. It, it has those moments. Yeah. It does have those kings and kings comedy moments. It does have those taxi driver moments. Yeah, it does. So, yeah, and it's gritty. It's dark. It's it's like Scorsese's film. Yeah, I think it's well rounded. So, Gotham itself is a character. Yeah. Um, the music is amazing in the movie. Um, and, and everything. That's another thing that's very Scorsese esque. Mm-hmm. Is the use of popular music and just to maximum effect. Right. I will never ever listen to That's Life again in the <laughs> That's same life. way. That's oh. life. You know what I'm saying? It's, and it's wow. I knew that this was going to happen from that first makeup test that we got. He doesn't have the typical Joker makeup, but it it is the Joker. But it is it is a more nuanced, broken, truer look into somebody like the Joker and what right. would actually cause somebody. It's like a it's a what if. What what would cause someone to be the Joker? What would bring that about? And you can totally see the clown prince of crime coming out of this. Mm. Because now people are noticing him. People are paying attention right. to him. And he's going to like, fuel with that. I think the scene where he seems more, most Joker-esque is like in the end when he's going and he's running from the cops in the subway. Yeah. You yeah. know, he's slipping around. He's putting on the other guy's mask. He causes the fight. He yep. slips out. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the scene where he uh, he dresses up as the bellboy to get into Top to Top. I love that he just puts on the he jacket. He does everything and just walks in. Yeah. Yeah. He, yeah, he, he was very Joker-esque. Robert he De Niro well. plays a Johnny Carson-esque type character mm-hmm. in this movie. And and I love that whole storyline. And it's nice to see Robert De Niro come full circle from King All of right. Comedy. Right? And so that's to be the whole cool. you know, A lot of people have been saying, making comparisons to King of Comedy and Taxi Driver. Those are two movies that I've never seen. I'm surprised oh, so many dude. people remember King of Comedy. That's, yeah. that's always the one that I've never... Yeah. That and After Hours, to me, were always like the forgotten Scorsese films. Right. You know? But he did um, But I've always loved it. Yeah. Um, I think After Hours is great, and King of Comedy. Mm-hmm. Of course, Jerry Lewis is in that one. Yeah. Robert De Niro plays a dude who wants to be a stand-up comedian, and he wants to get on this dude's show, so he kidnaps him. <laughs> <laughs> right? It makes sense. He even has the fake talk show scene. Like he, like yeah. Joker does, yeah. uh, Joaquin does in the movie. This movie's so disturbing, it because is. as I'm watching this movie, I'm like... I do that. <laughs> you know, like when he's pretending to like be on the show and stuff, I'm like, I've done that. I'm a little concerned. <laughs> it, just makes, it made me feel so weird at the end it of the does. And I was I was really thinking. About, I was thinking, like how what was what how did you feel right as the movie ended? Now I watched this movie alone too. Yeah. That was a weird I experience. It alone. I watched it alone. I watched it alone. Uh, that was a weird experience. Yeah, I can imagine. I walked out of there and I was like, I'm just questioning everything about me right now. <laughs> for some reason. Like it's a, it's a movie that kind of relies on making you uncomfortable. Yeah. Yes, it does. And it does. It does. It finds a way. And uh, I can see, like I can see a lot how why, why somebody would not like this movie. It's yeah, not. Like, yeah, totally it's, it's not for everybody. It's not. It's not it's a movie not. like for everybody. It's not like you know an Avenger or something like that where anybody could just you know. Watch it, and you know. Well, that's not it's, real cinema. It's, like, it's, it's a very, very, very <laughs> it's just, yeah. It's a very slow like, burn it's, it's for just, it. It does. It, yeah. makes, it makes you feel things, you know. When it does, uh, like 
one of the com- things that you know I thought about a lot is like the, the, the whole idea of you know G- Gotham's got this garbage problem mm-hmm. and like all this garbage is piled up people just have to ignore it and it's kind of like you know the people are like people like uh, Arthur are like that too they're like garbage and like you know people are ignoring them yeah you know and oh just, dude you're right that tied that's tied into the th- yeah, Professor good. Brooks over here. No, that's I, I that's a, I guarantee you that's exactly why that's in there. Yeah, now. I just thought it was something to build out some yeah. of the you know the the tension that was building up in the city because I think that the city is a great character yeah. in the movie as and well. It's also, it like they, they make light of that too. Like they make a joke about you know how the garbage like uh, yeah like on the the Vendero show like there's a joke about the whole Super garbage rats. situation. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you know the people who can afford to just ignore it. It's not a problem to them, but, you know, to the other people who, you know... Dude, right? Here's another thing I noticed striking in this movie, a visual theme, like, tie-in, whatever, right? You see, over and over in this movie, him walking up those stairs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Tired, broken down, up the stairs, right, to his home, to his life of misery, you know, and all this stuff. Yeah, and when he becomes a joker, he's he's dancing down. And I love the idea that He's going up the entire movie. Yeah. He's trying to be better. He's trying. He just can't get there. When is he free? It's when he's it descending the descent yeah. into hell and madness. I don't know. I really like that visual it cue. Was. I thought that was really yeah. nice touch. Um, it, it's it's made well. Top Bill does a great job. With I think it's film. his best film. For sure. This is yeah has to be. It makes you feel for him in ways I didn't really think I'd expect for the Joker. It, it makes you want to understand. Why he would be uh, later on cause what happens, or did it happen? We we, yeah. should, we we go into these hallucinations he has. We don't know right now if he his plan succeeded. He finally got the attention he wanted. He's actually the Joker, or this was all a figment of his imagination. What if it was? It I, could I like been. Uh, I like his last uh, line where like he's laughing and his the psychiatrist asks him like, "What's so funny?" And he's like, "I was just thinking of a joke." He's like, "You mind telling me?" He's like. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. That is good. And stuff. then tells the joke. <laughs> and then well, the joke. The joke was that Bruce Wayne's parents got murdered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, and it's the the murders get tied into those riots, and that's yeah. it's interesting. It's nice little neat. It's, yeah, it's, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of I don't know. Like it feels kind of like it was forced. It. Yeah, I feel it like it was, been. but I didn't. I don't think it actually hurts the movie. Right? I no. like the scene with Bruce at the gate, and what I presume is Alfred. Mm-hmm. I like that scene a lot. And mm-hmm. I like Bruce being in that scene, and that was very creepy. Mm-hmm. Right? What he did to Bruce. Yeah, yeah, that was... Woo! Different than the way he treated the kid on the bus. Right. You know, two very different... different. There's, this is a movie of duality. He was, well. losing, he was losing his mind slowly. Yeah. He's gotten to the point where he's at Bruce Wayne's mansion. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, you know, so it's weird. Real quick... It, oh, yeah, go ahead. No, 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 no. I liked it. I yeah. just, I'm saying, love this film. Real yeah. quick, before we get to the ratings, do you like the laugh? I, I I do, I do like it, but you know I understand that it is annoying and irritating. But that's kind of the idea, I think. Yeah. It's it's just uh, you know, it's not him. It's, it has no mirth to it. Yeah. It's no, just you know a reaction that he has, an involuntary reaction, you know. Mm-hmm. And like, like a lot of times it's not. It's like he's kind of he's not even smiling. It's kind of almost like someone having a coughing fit. Yeah. yeah. Except you know he's laughing instead. Uh, there are times where he's crying, yeah. and that's what the beautiful nature of phoenix's performance is are those scenes because like he's laughing and choking because he's trying not to and he's like got this call it's always in nervous situations yeah and his his eyes are so obviously in pain right you know Mm -hmm. and just it's just uh i love it because obviously he's supposedly allegedly got this condition where he you know his brain mixes up those signals and he he kind of like laughs when he's like feeling anxious or anxiety or like you know pain or something i don't know you like to laugh i do i really do it it brings a chill to you when it happens because yeah. even when he's like trying not to do it when he's going to his uh, boss's office and he's just laughing and then and he, he turns the corner. Turns. Oh, yeah, man, he turns the, and it's just creepy. It is a creepy. Moment. So yeah, I love that laugh. Yeah, I mean, Joaquin Phoenix is this movie. He is the Joker. Is he the best Joker mm. on screen? I'm gonna. Say he and Heath Ledger are really close because okay. Heath Ledger was gritty too. Heath Ledger gave uh, a performance that I've never really quite 
gotten over. I wish he had been Joker longer. Yeah, me too. So, to find out yeah. what he could have done on top of what he started, and it was brilliant. So, yeah. he and, and Joaquin has his own style of Joker, and it's it, it's a lot more compartmentalized. Mm-hmm. He's You understand why he would become the Joker. Yeah. Heath Ledger makes me feel that way, that he is the Joker living his best life. Yeah. So, they're kind of like Nick and Nick. Okay. And then like Jack Nicholson, Cesar Romero. Okay. <laughs> Mark Hamill at the top. Is he the best Joker on screen? <laughs> uh, I still think Heath is better. Yeah. At this point, I would still say Heath right now, but... Well, I gotta let this one sit for a while. Because Heath was again. more of a comic book. He was Joker. a comic book Joker. This is, not a, this is not a version of the Joker we've ever seen. Mm-mm. And I like that. I like that it was something un- like unexpected and something we haven't seen with the character. Um... But it still was very much the character. Mm-hmm. I don't know. He I really was Joker. Don't. So now we're gonna do the ratings, the rating system here. So out of five possible, you digs, Jelani. What do you give Joker? Oh man, love that Joker. Love that Joker. Yeah, I love that Joker. Five. Five. Perfect five. score. Wow. Um, I'm saying that now because I think about it as I, I'm all over <laughs> it again. Yeah. Because <clears throat> I know I need to watch it again. I was uncomfortable. The, the most of the movie, as Brooks could probably attest to, I was uncomfortable for most of that movie, and it did not make me feel like it was going to be what it turned out to be. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel that way, and I have to watch it again to make sure that I like because like there are movies in my life that you can watch once, and you're just like, I'm good. Yeah, yeah, you know, Oscar worthy movies. That you Schindler's know. List is a great Schindler's movie, List. but I ain't watching it. I ain't watching it weekend. again. Twelve Years a Slave. I'm not gonna watch that again. Yeah. There's just things you don't watch. And I know that I this is one of those films, but I still have to watch it again to make sure I was right. If someone was like so fascinated with this movie they watch it all the time, I'd be like, Yeah, dumb. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Someone can't. someone needs to watch out for Jim. <laughs> but it's a one time watch. It's a one it's a good one time watch. Um, but it, it brings the character to Joker to life and I, I really sincerely hope that he's nominated for an Oscar. So five. Five you digs. What about you, Brooks? I give four. Four. Four you did. Yeah, it's, it's a good movie, but it, it doesn't, you know, it's not something I can see myself watching repeatedly. Yeah. yeah. You know, it is a very, a very mood-oriented movie, I'd say. Like, mm-hmm. like if, you're, if, if, if you're in, like, a particularly dark mood, you don't want to watch this movie. It's <laughs> yeah, not going to help not you. Not at all. It might push <laughs> you over the edge. Watch yeah. The Princess Bride instead. Yeah. yeah. Watch some Super Sentai. <laughs> it makes me feel good. Watch Blade. Blade! Blade! Blade make you feel good. Blade more dangerous things out there than not the vampires. I, I'm, I'm right there with you, Brooks. I'm going to give it a four. Um, it's pretty so- solid. I'm not quite on a five level. Um, I was thinking 4.5, but I just... there. The one thing I don't like about the movie is I don't like how they almost does kind of get painted as a hero at the end. Mm-hmm. I think that, that... I don't know. I just That made me a little unnerved, uncomfortable... But maybe that's the point of it. That's the point of it. And it makes it makes Batman. Yeah, it does technically make Batman. Batman. But I do like the film. I think it's masterfully shot. I think it's one of the best performances I've seen on screen in a long time. Mm -hmm. Is Joaquin Phoenix in this role? Um, I like the movie. Um, I think it's got some funny moments when he walks into the the glass door. It's yeah. cracked me up so much. And when when Thomas that was funny to me because I remember doing that one time at, at his house. Yeah. Her apartment. Yeah. Yeah. You, oh, God, yeah. you did. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, I walked right into it and just fell, yeah. fell back. And everybody was laughing. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Bro. And I also like the moment Thomas punches him square in the face in the yeah. bathroom. That's a great bit, too. Um, so I'm right there with you. I'm going to give it a four. Four, you dig. So four, four, five for an average of 4.28693463393. Oh, what? Like Power Rangers? What? Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Anyway, so... <laughs> How many Power Rangers references can we jam into yeah, this? Yeah, let's do it. So, let's time for Buster. Let's go ahead and wrap up the show. I've been Rockin' Robbie Bills, but anyway, thank you so much for checking out this video. Let us know your thoughts about the Joker in the comments down below, and more movie reviews are coming. We're thinking about Gemini Man. Yeah. It's about Two-Face, right? So we do Joker, then we do a Two-Face movie. Gemini Man. It's not about Gemini. It's not about Two-Face. It's not about Two-Face at all. Anyway... Thank you so much for checking out the video. I've been Rockin' Robbie Billups. This has been... <laughs> this has been... Brooks the Magnificent. And we are Pop Culture Philosophers. Thank you for joining the PCP Army. You can do so officially over at our Facebook group, PCP Army. Thank you all so much. You dig? <laughs>